kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And this taken in at the goal line. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 26. They run here with Rico Dowdle. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It'll be a very long night for the defense because someone's going to run for some big yardage. It is fun to watch the big man work the middle of the field. How about that post route there? Did an excellent job of getting his head around to look the football in and gain significant yardage. No running room for Zeke on first down as he'll maybe get a yard out of that. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. This one incomplete. Almost picked off by the rookie, but he couldn't quite look it in. And now it's fourth down. And Zerline's kick is good. And the Cowboys are going to jump out to a 3-0 lead. So they wind up turning the turnover into points as they convert there for three. Yeah, that was a nice job there to force the fumble. They recover, hand things over to their offense, and then the offense went down and got them three. That alone, that's not enough to win a game, but both units able to do their jobs on these last two drives. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. And that is knocked away in the middle of the field and incomplete. And that's a nice job there because you've got to play the ball, not the man winning coverage. That'll keep you away from a lot of needless penalties. And he's able to knock that one away. He's going to fire one deep over the middle. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And he takes this down deep on the Cowboys' side of the field. A big play there for Minnesota. The defense, they weren't fooled on that post route. They just couldn't make the play. And the offense definitely tried to fool them because you saw the other route combinations, didn't you? Anything that they were running trying to draw attention away from the deep part of the field, but still had it covered, yet they were able to come up with a nice play. Now they run. It's Mason shedding the tackle. I know a lot of times we like to put players in certain boxes. He does this and he does that. But this guy, he can do a little bit of everything. He's not just a lead blocker or a guy who protects the passer. Handing the ball, he might want to get out of the way. A pickup of four on first down. It'll be second and goal. The end result was brute force on brute force. But think about everything that's going on if you're playing defensive tackle. You're dealing with at least one blocker across from you, trying to deal with him, shed him, and maybe even a second one before you have to try and make the tackle on the big guy. 3 nothing after one on EA Sports. The ball mere inches from the white line on third and goal. Mason. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Minnesota. Ben Mason. Excellent work there to get in on the touchdown run. And the Vikings have taken the lead. Now for the point after. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. 
So this drive spans seven plays, and it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is Tony Pollard. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Second drive forthcoming here for the Dallas Cowboys. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Part, I remember a coaching friend of mine used to tell his running backs before games, make sure you run and jog with your offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking when those big behemoths start to create space for you up front. He did a pretty good job of just following those guys through there for a nice explosive run. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Boy, that was certainly well-read defensively. And the key to any screenplay is space to work. And there was none to be found there. And they tackle him for just a short game. On the run, it's Dowdle. And he's got it across the midfield stripe and into Viking territory. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. Two minutes to play in this first half. 7-3, our score. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. At that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? And that one's going to be off target and incomplete. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. To throw on second and 10, Prescott. They'll set up the screen to Elliott. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Here's Prescott. And that is incomplete. This Minnesota D up to the task on the third down pass play. Zerline's kick is up and through. But hang on, a flag is down. Now if it's on the defense, they might decline it and take the points. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. Now it's first and 10 after a costly penalty there on fourth down. From the red zone now, Prescott. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. I'm gonna need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. Five yards. Now it's third and five. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you're throwing so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. 
And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. And touchdown, Cowboys! Blake Jarwin from four yards out. And the Cowboys have retaken the lead. Now Greg Zerline on for the extra point. Oh, this is blocked. This is going the other way. But he will not be able to bring this one back in the extra point attempt unsuccessful. I know it's easy to kind of shrug off a blocked extra point, but this game is shaping up to be a tight one. The second half, this could prove crucial. Yeah, we might look back on this one. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Following the botch PAT, they're set to kick this one away. Fielded just outside the goal line. Oh, a good return up past the 30. The Vikings going to take over now late in this first half. And with them trailing, there is still enough time to try to string a few plays together, maybe get into field goal range. He sets to fire deep. A leap, and he's got it. He got it. A big connection on that one. 36 yards. There's the arm strength that we saw in college and during the scouting process. And really, it's not just the arm strength there, but the placement as well. To me, that was an excellent combination of arm talent and accuracy. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. Right up to that point, I was about to say he's had a pretty good half catching the football, but let's just be honest about it. He should have caught that one. And he knows that. That was one right in his bread basket and one he normally catches. So three seconds here remain in the half on as the field goal unit to see about getting three points. From the right hash and call it an even 50 yards. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice, an ambitious effort, but it's well short. So we, due to time constraints, we move you forward in today's broadcast to the beginning of the third quarter. The Cowboys will get the football first here, and they have the lead as well as we are underway in quarter three. Now Pollard. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Dallas offense here set to begin the drive. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. Second half starts with a carry by Elliott. No, oh, Elliott going to be hit. He coughs it up. Loose football. And the Vikings pick up the football. And his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. So turnovers, Charles, you figure will be key in the second half. And that's a big giveaway there. Yeah, and as you and I both know, coaches are always... And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Meanwhile, Prescott's throw taken in by Cooper here. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. As they began this drive, I was wondering how they were going to attack since they're playing with the lead. Would they continue to try and push the ball downfield? Well, after one play, it appears that the answer is yes. A first down carry by Elliott. Oh, Elliott going to be hit. He coughs it up. Loose football. And the Vikings pick up the football. And they get the football. They'll set up shop at their own 49-yard line. Whenever I see it. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. Now, the question, was the knee, in fact, down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. Up, up, up. 
So that challenge is successful one. From just shy of midfield, Prescott. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. And this one complete, it's Faye Hoko. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. That was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. He's going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Brings up second down. Prescott. And that one off the mark behind him. Incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. Toward the sideline, did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge, and that's good enough for a first down. Now Elliott, and he goes backwards on this one, losing yardage to the seven. Yikes, a four-yard loss really sets him back now for second down. Scott from the gun. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. We always talk about receivers. If the ball hits your hand, you're supposed to haul it in, but it is hard to adjust to a pass thrown a little bit behind you. That one was all the momentum going forward. Couldn't contort his body back to grab it. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked up by Talanoa Hufanga. And he'll take this all the way down inside the 40. So an opening drive interception to begin this second half. And just think about the time you spend in the locker room going over what you expected to do in the second half. Not the way they saw it, not the way they drew it up. You find out this is something that you can't just edit, right? There's no rewrite here. This is live, and now they've got to find a way out of this hole. So the scoring dried up here in the third. Nothing that quarter for either side. You are watching Madden Ultimate Team on EA Sports. Trask on first down. Looking for the end zone. And this one almost intercepted. Had a chance to come down with it in the end zone, but could not hang on. On second and ten, Trask. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. Trey McKinney there to make the grab. And the Vikings have once again taken the lead. And now remember, all touchdowns are reviewed. And in a tight game like this, they're going to take a good, long look at it. touchdown originally and this will stay a touchdown after the video review so they had it right extra point by Blankenship is up and good and the lead is up to five the drive there only spanning three plays and it's polished off by a Viking score set now to kick this one away and off it goes now Pollard football and the Vikings pick the football and he'll take this down inside the 15 yard line so problems there on the return very cool and now before the ball changes hands they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it about set for this next drive by the Cowboys offense 
Now the bad news for them, they've seen that cushion they once had totally evaporate, and they're working from behind. The good news, they now have the opportunity to regain the lead right back. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know, this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. His throw incomplete. Blake Jarwin, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, always different, no matter what you do in practice. You can't simulate it, right? So your decision-making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. And he is down deep into Minnesota territory. A big play here for Dallas. Well, this is where an offense needs to show what it's made of, and in fact, where a quarterback needs to show what he's made of, trying to engineer a fourth-quarter comeback, and he hits a big one right there. So a big play as it gets him all the way down to the 20 now for first and 10. They'll try the right side with Elliott. Two yards that time, a stark contrast from the big chunk on the previous play. The last run good for two, here's second and eight. They go to Elliott again. Trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. So the Cowboys in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They face a critical third down now, needing a score here in the late going. That ball is caught. It's Gallup. Touchdown, Cowboys. Michael Gallup there to make the grab. And the Cowboys have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. Prescott to throw. And this is caught. And it's a three-point game. So they make the decision. They want a three-point lead versus a two-point lead, and they got it. Yeah, at this stage of the game, it seems like the exact right thing to do. Put a little pressure on your defense, but the biggest thing now is you're making the other team chase you. Fielded just outside the goal line. A solid return. Pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. So all eyes on this Vikings offense. Down on the scoreboard. At time, a huge factor. He's going to let it fly. He's got a man complete. A big play that time through the air. 33 yards. I'm pretty sure any quarterback will tell you it's nice to have a tight end that can stretch the field. And how about him right there, working in the heart of the defense, and they connect on a very nice play downfield. A combination of... And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Des Fitzpatrick. 35 yards. And the Vikings on just two plays have taken the lead. Extra point by Blankenship is up and good. And that will make this a four-point game. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Now Pollard. And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. Now it's the Cowboys' turn. Trailing by four, a minute six to play. They need a touchdown. A field goal is worthless now as they come up on first and ten. Prescott. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Don't with me, partner. Take a 
deep breath because that's what they're doing down the field now. That incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit. Get in the huddle, kind of scan the crowd, see if any celebrities are here. Relax a little bit as they start this big drive. Now Prescott. And that throw behind his man. He missed him incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions now third and ten. And first things first, before you think about marching the ball down the field, you got to move the chains. You're exactly right. Got to get back into focus here. Get the first down. That's what's vital to them. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 38. And they will be set up now as he brings this thing all the way back inside the 20. When you talk about making winning plays, that is a winning play at this stage of the game to come up with that interception, huge. I like how you identified that because most people think winning plays are the offense trying to get it done. In this case, nursing a lead, they found a way to make a play on that side of the ball and maybe finish things off. Now the Cowboys are going to burn the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds left to go in the game. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. And he's across for the touchdown. And in the final minute, that should just about seal it. And that touchdown should make you feel comfortable but do you really feel like it's totally over yet? Not totally, but I think you're pretty much there. Yeah, you've still got to make sure you stay with it, do all the right things down the stretch, especially on defense, but that touchdown there, you've got to feel good about your chances. Extra point by Blankenship is up and good, and that pushes the lead up to 11. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Now Pollard. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Dallas offense set for this next drive. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Just don't want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down to throw Prescott. And that will be incomplete. That means it's just one last chance left, and this has to be a first down or a touchdown, or this game's over. Desperation time. Prescott on fours. This one to Jarwin over the middle. And they will get the conversion on fourth down to stay alive, but time, not an ally. Here's Dak. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And this one is incomplete. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone, eventually that becomes man on man, and you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. Here's Prescott. He's going to let it fly. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. One last shot now for Prescott. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And this is, oh my goodness, he pulled it in one-handed. Congratulations on yet another victory.